This is Rob Swatsky from the York campus of Harrisburg Area Community College in York, Pennsylvania. And in this podcast, I'm continuing my review of the bones and bony landmarks of the appendicular skeleton. And our focus today is on the bones that make up the pectoral or shoulder girdle. This includes the clavicle or collarbone and the scapula or shoulder blade. The pectoral girdle is where the humerus, which is the upper arm bone, attaches to the axial skeleton. The clavicle is the anterior bone of the pectoral girdle, and it articulates with the manubrium, which is the superior portion of the sternum, to form the sternoclavicular joint. The scapula is the posterior bone of the pectoral girdle, and it articulates with both the clavicle and the humerus. It articulates with the clavicle to form the acromioclavicular joint and with the humerus to form the glenohumeral or shoulder joint. The bones of the pectoral girdle are held in place and stabilized by muscles, such as the levator scapulae and rhomboids, that have attachments with the vertebral column. Okay, let's examine the clavicle. The clavicle is a small, narrow bone that has a pronounced S-curve. It sits horizontally across the anterior thorax, just superior to the first rib. You can easily palpate the clavicle because it's found just under the skin, and it helps transmit force from the arm to the trunk. When viewed in the anatomical position, the medial half of the clavicle is convex anteriorly, which means that the bone curves towards you and the lateral half is concave anteriorly, which means it curves away from you. The middle region of the clavicle where these two curves meet is the weakest point of the bone, and not coincidentally, it's the most frequent fracture site. The sternal end or extremity of the clavicle is the more rounded and thicker medial end. This is the end that articulates with the manubrium of the sternum to form the sternoclavicular joint. The acromial end or extremity of the clavicle is the flatter, broader, lateral end of the bone. It articulates with the acromion of the scapula to form the acromioclavicular joint. The conoid tubercle is an inferior bump on the surface of the clavicle's lateral end. It's the attachment point for the conoid ligament which connects the clavicle to the scapula. Okay, let's take a closer look at the scapula. This is a large, flat, triangular bone that's located posteriorly in the superior thorax between the second and seventh ribs. The spine of the scapula is a large diagonal ridge running across the posterior surface of the bone. You can feel the spine by running your fingers along the back of your shoulder. And this is a great landmark to differentiate the posterior and anterior sides of the bone. The acromion is a flat process that extends away from the lateral end of the spine. It resembles the head of a golf club. The name acromion refers to its topmost location on the shoulder. It's the highest point that's easy to palpate. And as stated earlier, it articulates with the acromial end of the clavicle to form the acromioclavicular joint. The glenoid cavity, or fossa, is a shallow depression found just inferior to the acromion. This is where the head of the humerus articulates to form the glenohumeral, or shoulder joint. The medial, or vertebral border, is the thin edge of the scapula closest to the backbone. The lateral, or axillary, border is the thicker edge closer to the arm. The inferior angle is where both the medial and lateral borders join together. The superior border is the superior edge of the scapula. And the superior angle is where both the superior and medial borders join together. The scapular notch is a small indent on the superior border, which allows passage of the subscapular nerve. The coracoid process is an anterior projection found at the lateral end of the superior border. The word coracoid means crow-like, which is a reference to the shape of the bone, which is said to resemble the head and beak of a crow. But I think it looks more like a crooked finger. 
it serves as an attachment point for ligaments and tendons of muscles of the arm and thorax, including the pectoralis minor, coracobrachialis, and biceps brachii. The supraspinous fossa is a groove located superior to the spine. It's an attachment point for the supraspinatus muscle of the shoulder. The infraspinous fossa is located just inferior to the spine, and it also serves as an attachment surface for the infraspinatus muscle of the shoulder. The subscapular fossa is a broader, slightly hollowed out region on the anterior surface of the scapula that serves as an attachment point for the subscapularis muscle. And that will conclude our review of the bones and bony landmarks of the pectoral girdle. I hope you're finding these podcasts helpful in your study of skeletal anatomy. Thanks a lot for watching, as well as for your wonderful feedback. I enjoy hearing from my viewers all over the world. I'll be posting more podcasts regularly from now through the summer. So until next time, bye.